And of course I have to... That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Amen Moto video viewers. That's a mouthful, isn't it? We're going to do a special edition of Amen Moto and we're going to interview Jeds from Jeds Moto. Welcome to the video, Jeds. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Doug. What? <laughs> so, uh, some of our Amen Moto viewers may not know who Jed is and shame on you because we've only been... We've only been pushing Jeds on everybody for the last 50 videos, I think, but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> but the viewers want to know, who is Jeds Moto? So, so Jeds, what is, what is Jeds Moto? We'll start out with, what is Jeds Moto? Jeds Moto um, started out as a business idea uh, with, with the thought of adding social media to kind of influx business. But the social media aspect has kind of absorbed the entity of Jed's Moto at the moment. But basically, it started out as a dealership. I I buy and sell motorcycles uh, as a side job or like as as a hobby. And uh, two years back, my, the state of Vermont told me I was selling too many motorcycles, uh, and I had to register as a dealer. And I registered as Jed's Moto. So technically, I have a business. And it is Jed's Moto. Uh, but uh, I'm primarily known for my videos at the moment. So the video is available on YouTube and Jed's Moto. If you do a search for Jed's, J-E-D-Z-M-O-T-O, -E Jed's Moto. And, and it's also, you can get to me through Jed'sMoto.com. So you have more subscribers than we do. How did you do that? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know why people find me entertaining but they do and I mean it's only us I've, I've got like uh, 450 ish subscribers at the moment and uh, I don't know I, I just do reviews and um, I, I say it how it is that's definitely the way I am I don't know if it's my bolsterous personality or what but um, uh, your videos they're, I don't know. they're very fun to watch so <laughs> All right, so <laughs> fun to watch. Yeah. How? Uh, when did you start riding motorcycles? How long you've been riding motorcycles? I started riding in 2007. So this will be my what 11th year, 11th mm -hmm. season. Um, I started out on a little Yamaha scooter, and then quickly discovered that scooters are not what you need when you start putting big miles on, and got a Suzuki GS750 and the rest is history so uh, 11 years so let's let's go chronologically through the bikes here so you had the scooter oh god can you do that yeah okay yeah uh, okay so I started out with a 88 Yamaha Riva and then I got the 81 GS 750 L uh, <clears throat> and then uh, I had a couple other scooters and little bikes in between but I'm going to go with the primaries and uh, then I bought my uh, Suzuki Bandit 1200 and then my 2001 Yamaha FZ1 and then the 2008 Suzuki B-King and then the 2008 Kawasaki Concourse 14 and then I kind of went through the two Harleys in between them uh, the Harley XG750A Street Rod and the XR1200 and now I am on a brandy new Triumph Bonneville T120 2018 That's a wonderful sound so let's talk about uh, your current steed here so you, you mentioned this sure um, yeah this is uh, a 2018 Triumph Bonneville T120 um, I picked this up Two and a half months ago, it'll be uh, two and three quarter months ago. It'll be three months next Sunday. Uh, has just about twelve thousand miles on it. Uh, I've done the cat, the the, the Motune uh, X pipe and 
the slip-on mufflers, uh, thrust in our gearing. Uh, that's about it, really. I, I didn't really want to mess too much with it because it's still under warranty. But it's been a great machine. It's got a wonderful uh, sound. Flame, it, I'm over here. <laughs> just, oh, okay. Just getting, <laughs> just getting pictures of the bike. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? Yes. <laughs> well, I was like, "Where the hell is he?" <laughs> I should have tapped on your shoulder. <laughs> I would have. Oh just, my god! It would have freaked me. <laughs> 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 what I'm really interested in is uh, more. You know, I want to call them instructional videos, but you have product reviews and some instructional videos. And, and and when you do stuff to the bike, you're you're pretty good about filming that stuff, right? Yeah, I try to I try to document it. Um, because I'll say, oh, I did this, and then I'll have several of my viewers will reach out to me and go, oh, can you do a video of that, or explain how you did that, and I, I try to be as informative as possible, uh, especially when it comes to how-tos, because you're going to, you save so much, you save oodles of money by doing your own work, um, so, and that for me is half the joy of owning a motorcycle is working on your motorcycle. You really know the ins and outs of your bike, so if you have a, experience a breakdown, you can Fix it up, fix it yourself. But. Yeah, it makes you a lot more independent and stuff too. And and usually, yeah. you know, there's some, there's always some secret handshake on doing a job. You know, make sure you do this first, or do that first, or have this special tool. That if you know that right. up front, it makes the job real easy. So you know, I'm I'm a big fan of anybody doing instructional videos on YouTube, and they they they've gone through the hard part and figured stuff out. So I try to make it as clear as possible. You know. Some of them might be kind of long and elongated and, you know, and also I get folks that'll like question my methods and question things and go, well, that's not going to work, obviously. And I'd be like, man, I mean, I've, I, my experience is this, is I put anywhere from 20 to 20 to 25, I'm going to hit about 30,000 miles this year. I'm going to pass. And uh, I have yet to, knock on wood, uh, wreck from my work, if, so to speak. So, mm -hmm. you know, I try to offer as much helpful and helpful information as I can. But, you know, user beware. You know, you're doing it yourself. I can't guarantee that, you know. Right. Yeah. So how did how did you and Scotty get, uh, get connected? So... Yeah, everybody will notice a lot of synergy now between Jed's Moto and Amen Moto. How did that all come up, come together? Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, I met Scotty on a TU250 uh, X forum uh, because uh, well, my other bike I have is a, is a 2015 Suzuki TU250 X, and um, and. Uh, Scotty Amen on TU250Riders.com, or I think that's what it is. I uh, started going back and forth. He, he was very, very excited about riding. I think at that time he was blogging, right? Yes, he was <sighs> blogging, right? Yeah, blogging. Oh God. So like, I did my very best to read them, but the thing is, I'm, I'm, you know. A 30-something year old that has an attention span that can be measured in nanoseconds. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> um, but he started doing videos, and the, the video that caught my mo caught my eye was the one where he's, like, riding in that nasty storm yeah, the on the TU. The hurricane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, the hurricane. I'm like, this guy's badass. Like, it takes a... <laughs> It takes it takes balls to do shit like that, you know. Right. And uh, I got hooked ever since. And then I we started having back and forths on the forum. And then, um, interestingly enough, we kind of he kind of disappeared off the TU 250 forum. And um, so I, I didn't really talk to him much. And uh, my my friend John. Uh, uh, <sighs> I refer to him as John B. on my in my videos. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's like one of my best friends over in Vermont. He's like, hey, have you ever heard of Cafe Racer podcast? I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I, I, 
and you know, because I asked him, like, what do you listen to in the car? Because it, it's winter, I don't have anything to listen to. He's like, oh, listen to this. Scotty's on there. So I like, joined Slack, and that's where I re got rekindled with Scotty. And it was just like, holy, this is such a small world, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, rest is history, really. Yep. Um, you know, Scotty and I just get along real well. He's a he's a bona fide internet friend for sure. <laughs> yep. So yeah, Cafe Racer podcast. Um, if you haven't listened to that at all, uh, really good. Uh, put out by uh, Crash and Steve, um, and and they're it's really not any it's not about cafe racers anymore. Um, you know. Uh, Crash is probably more of the ca- cafe style guy, but you know he's he's up for a triumph, right? And uh, and S- Steve's doing the adventure bike thing. Um, yeah. But it's been it's been really fun on the Slack channel. So if you're a Patreon on um, the Cafe Racer podcast, and you only have to spend a buck a month to be a Patreon on that channel, um, you get access to Slack channel. And I'll tell you what, it's really entertaining because there's some very smart people, including you, Jeds, um, but some very smart and witty people on that channel, on the Slack channel. There's, there's a lot of fun going on in there, and it's really been, it's been great. I've been having fun with that. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of combined knowledge there for sure. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, yep. West West brings a lot to the table. You know, mm-hmm. um, a lot of almost everyone has brought something to the table, and we've definitely learned a lot from each other. We're pretty close, tight knit community for sure. Right. You know, special case is in the middle of a custom build right now, and and so we're yeah. kind of we're kind oh, of yeah. following along with that. And uh, there's, yeah, there's some there's yeah. some amazing talent on there. Oh, it's, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Uh, S- Steve is like really talented. Uh, he's a great cat, you know, and I, I, I like to try to meet my internet friends, so uh, <laughs> I, it was, I had an opportunity to help Steve out this past winter with getting that project bike that he's transforming and turning into this j- beautiful piece of machinery. Um, I was, I had the honor to help him out with that, and he's, he's a great guy, you know, mm-hmm. I, I want to try to meet as many of our slackers <laughs> as possible. <laughs> In the flesh, <laughs> or on two wheels. Right. <laughs> so we've been, you know, we've been on this uh, this road for all morning, and we've been talking quite a bit. But it's, it's a really great story about how you landed on the Bonneville, right? Yeah. You want me to tell it? Absolutely. Okay. Um. Uh, so <laughs> I bought a Bonneville. When Thank you very much. <laughs> I bought a Bonneville. <laughs> I pulled my head. I pulled my head out of my ass. <laughs> and I bought a Bonneville. <laughs> I bought a Triumph. That's funny. <laughs> uh, uh, huh? There's more to it than that. Oh, there's way more. Okay, so, um, my I really wanted to meet Amen Moto because these guys are awesome and they get me through the winter because i can't ride in the winter at all and uh scott and and doug you know their channel's great it's just going through these adventures and i'm just like into it i really wanted to meet you to meet these guys so and i'm not trying to put you in a third person doug but no, that's fine and um basically uh, so I, I, I lined up to come down for uh, Bike Week uh, in Daytona, and at that point I knew I was I was in a a shot's distance into reaching out to Amen Moto. And uh, oh, watch out! This yeah, guy, do I don't want, know what he's doing. You want to check on him? Left lane. Do we want to check on him? Sure. We'll pause our video here for a second. Get the black license plate. You're good? Okay, he's good. Thank you. Okay. So there was your black license plate with white letters. It's an antique, Florida antique plate. Okay, so you wanted to meet? You wanted to meet the mighty Amen Moto team. Yep. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, when I brought my, I went down to Florida, I decided to bring my Harley that uh, I recently acquired over the winter. And, uh, well, it's actually the fall. And uh, as soon as I got off the truck, it broke down. It was totally a piece of junk. So I was just like fed up with it. But, um, so I was kind of like looking for a new bike. And I come down to Flo uh, Fort Lauderdale. And I meet, uh, you meet up with Scotty, meet up with you, meet up with Al. And I think that was it. Yep. And you guys, bro uh, you broke off because you had to go, you had to go home because you had a long commute home. Right. And Scotty's like, hey, you want to try the Bronneville out? I th I think you'll like it. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Because, and I, I, I never actually gave much of consideration to the Bonneville because I'm a numbers guy. Oh, well, I used to be a big numbers guy. It's like uh, 80 horsepower, that's nothing, you know? So we switched out and God, I fell in love with that bike. It was just awesome. And you know, the, the video can be found on, on your channel, I believe, and my channel. I think I have, I think I have a video and you guys have a video, right? Or is it just yeah. me that has the video? I think you have that video. And then, uh, yeah, so I loved it. I loved it. it. It was great. And then we went to Key West, and the Harley ran like junk down the Key West and back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at that point, uh, <laughs> we met up with Scotty. I'm like, Scotty, can we switch? <laughs> and he let me ride it again. And that was that was when I really started to really the needle started to turn towards getting the the Bonneville. Yeah, so and, the other bike you, know, you were interested in was the Kawasaki, right? The new Kawasaki, what is that, the... The, the Z900RS. And uh, I rode the Z900. They didn't have any RSs available for demo. And I was honestly about this close to buying a Z900RS. So I reached out to my local Triumph dealer, which is not local at all. It's two and a half hours away from my home. And I reached out to all the local Kawasaki dealers. They, none of them had the Z900RS available when I got back to Vermont. Um, but, you know, they had the T120, and I was looking for a used one, and they were like, ah, good luck with that. People buy these and don't bring them back. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And the rest is history, you know. Um, I tried. I, I didn't want to give up, be too hopeful if something fell through or whatnot, but they took, they gave me a great trade in on the XR, and I got onto the Triumph, and I've been happy, so that's all. He meant. It's all Scotty's fault. <laughs> in a good way. In a good. In way. a great way. Yep. I'm very thankful. Very, very thankful. He gave me a lot of seat time, which really, really is what did it in for me. You know, I, I was. I mean, when I was looking at the, for the Z900 RS up north, the only reason I was looking for that, and I still had the T120. I already contacted the Triumph dealer. I was going to use have them fight for my business like that's kind of what i was trying to leverage at but they didn't have any so they wouldn't order one either oh well so in hindsight then you think you made the right choice oh i i absolutely know it <clears throat> there's um there's a few when you ride when you ride as many motorcycles as i have and the amount of miles you put i put on you just you either have the chemistry with the bike or you don't. And the chemistry on this bike is just perfect for me. I, I'm, I'm comfortable on it. I, I, I know it. I trust it. Um, and I, it handles well. And <clears throat> I've never haven't felt like this since my last big bike that I put, you know, was my FZ1. And I retired that with 74,000 miles. So, and I only retired it because... It was an oh one. It was just old, you know. It was time to move on. Right. Uh, I think I'll have this one for a very long time, and I'll probably have it have some big miles on it by the time I, I turn it in. So. And Scott said the same thing, right? Scott said, "This is my. I am not selling his bike, right? I'm gonna die with this bike. <laughs> I'm gonna be old. Yeah. And I'm gonna be in a nursing home, and the motorcycle is gonna be parked next to me." <laughs> <laughs> and I'll reach over and start it up every once in a while, blip the throttle, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, you know he may. Oh, it's def He may have more motorcycles, and uh, but 
his his Bonneville is a keeper. He's very happy with it. Yeah, the, it's definitely one of the, and it's really like the a bike of of the time. It's really, I could see this in the next 10, 15 years being a bike that people want to buy because it's that good. You know, they did it so they did such a great job on this bike. Uh, it's four cylinder smooth but it's two cylinder gumption you know it's they did it right everything about it's right and with the modifications I've done this thing is no slouch it, it goes very quick faster than I need it to be you know <laughs> and Triumph has done a very good job of modernizing their entire line right um, oh yeah you know a 2015 Bonneville is a very different beast from a 2016 and, oh, they're totally different. Yeah, totally, totally different bike. You can't tell from the outside, but you know it when you first sit down and start them up. Um, you well, know. that's the thing. They did a great job is retaining that classic look mm -hmm. and the classic lines. You, you, how many times do you have people come up and ask me if that's a 71 or a 73? I'm like, no. No, that is definitely not. <laughs> it's a 2018. <laughs> so crazy things like making the throttle body look like a carburetor, right? Yeah. <laughs> that sort yep. of detail is is uh, why that it's such a unique bike that way. But um, because they modernized them, it's they've gotten uh, the reliability has gone way up on the Triumphs. And they're uh, they're super motorcycles. So. Oh, they're great now. They're really on their game. The last last few years, I mean, if you look at like Triumph sales and the you know. They're up on up on sales. They were up 11%. 11%, that's two digits. It's huge. Yeah. You know, while other other manufacturers are struggling to keep keep riders or just get sales in general. You know, like Harley. <laughs> you know, we're gabbing away, and there's some really beautiful scenery off to the left here. <laughs> I know. You know, how can how can we find you? Let's say I'm going to be in New England, and um, oh. I, and I have access to a motorcycle, and I want to go riding with you. What do I do? Uh, it's that's that's great. You can email me at jeds at jedsmoto.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me if you just want to shoot me an email. Uh, I go to Je uh, you can go to Jeds Moto, watch my videos, comment. Um, put a comment in and say hey what hey Jets or send me a message and uh, I usually get back to folks as soon as I can and uh, I can show you some really good riding that's what I do it's basically what I live for so and I'd like to extend the uh, invitation to the Amen Moto people too, our viewers the people the people of Amen Moto my the peep Amen Moto folks my peeps <laughs> um <laughs> If you want to go riding with us, uh, you know, look us up. We're uh, we're out on the web at uh, amenmoto.com and of course on YouTube, amenmoto. Um, but we'd love to ride with you, and I'll do an interview with you, just like I've done with Jeds, and we'll get your story on TV. We'll get you your 15 minutes of fame that you deserve. Uh, but but it's fun. It's fun hearing. Um, it it's great talking with other motorcyclists because everybody's got a story, right? You talk to yep. pe you talk to people on a car and they're just going places, right? But um, like Mike that we just met at the restaurant, he you know he he's got a story, right? And he's going to stop and talk to us about right. it. Right. So we want to hear your story. There he is. That's Jed's is posing here, by the way, guys. He does this. You're doing the pose. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for talking with us. We'll um, we'll wrap this up. And um, all right. Look for both of our channels, and thank you, everybody, for watching. And please subscribe to both channels. We really appreciate it. Get your kids to subscribe. Get your mom and dad to subscribe. We need more subscribers. So pass the word. And everybody, ride safe.